Good day, folks. Thank you for joining us here at Your Health. On today's program, we want to talk about gluten sensitivity or celiac disease, as it's commonly called. This is a reaction to gluten in wheat and other cereal grains. The incidence of celiac disease is increasing dramatically, and it may be the cause of your health decline. So that's our concept for today. Please stay tuned for that. But first, let's go to our news. Let's see what's happening in the health world. Short-term steroid use may be more dangerous than thought. The researchers from the University of Michigan evaluated hospital and health insurance records of one and a half million non-elderly Americans. They found even one dose of steroid was associated with a 500% increase of a serious blood infection called sepsis, a 300% increase of blood clots, and a 200% increase risk of bone fracture over the three months following steroid use. Over three months now. They found the most common forms of short-term steroids, such as the use of prednisone or methylprednis alone is either for back pain, asthma, allergies and bronchitis, tendinitis or bursitis. The study's authors used three different statistical techniques to confirm their findings. They also recommend that doctors should consider other treatment options before routinely resorting to prescribing steroids. Folks, the results of this study are truly shocking. Every year, millions of Americans are prescribed glucocorticosteroids, or just steroids for short. In fact, in this study of one and a half million, one in five subjects had taken these common drugs for our most common health problems, such as back pain, ruptured discs, allergies, asthma, bronchitis, tendinitis, poison ivy, and so on. What they found was when healthy, relatively young people are given a short course of steroids, even one dose, their risk of developing serious sepsis, an infection of the bloodstream that requires hospitalization, increases by 500%. The risk of blood clots increases 300%. The risk of bone fracture, 200%. Now, I want to be perfectly clear on this important issue. The risk of developing any of these serious side effects is low, even if you have taken a steroid. The figures for serious effects in those not taking steroids are about one per thousand, which is increased with steroid use to five per thousand. So the absolute risk is still low, a few cases per thousand, but the relative risk is high. Now, nonetheless, the point remains, taking steroids is serious business with potentially serious side effects. Keep in mind, this study was conducted on young, healthy people who took a short course of steroids, say a shot or a steroid dose pack, and that was it, no more. But the majority of steroids are consumed by older Americans with multiple health conditions and for a long period of time. Now, I want to state clearly that the judicious use of steroids can be life-saving. They have their legitimate place, but we are overusing them, especially the frequent and long-term use of steroids. Now, the answer, once again, is addressing the underlying cause of the health problem and not just masking it with powerful hormonal treatments like steroids. Eating less trans fats leads to reductions in heart attack and stroke. Researchers from Yale University compared New York State Department of Health statistics of people living in counties that restricted the restaurant use of trans fat with counties that have no trans fat restrictions. They found after three or more years of trans fat restriction, it led to a 6.2% reduction in combined occurrence of heart attack and stroke. The U.S. Food and Drug Administration has approved a nationwide ban on trans fats. Study was published by JAMA Cardiology. Well, folks, trans fats are chemically altered vegetable oils. This change creates a lard-like fat that boils at a very high temperature. Trans fats are used by food companies and restaurants to make chips, crackers, french fries, and various fried foods. And they also use them in baking. In baked goods, they also help to preserve the food, creating a long shelf life, thus making prepackaged foods more tasty and profitable. And let's be honest, the use of trans fats makes foods delicious and people love them. However, they are toxic to our systems and they increase the risk of cardiovascular disease. And we have suspected they're dangerous for many years, but the recently enacted laws restricting trans fats in specific areas have given us the opportunity to prove 
their health-destroying effect. And within just a few years, the rates of stroke and heart attack have dropped an impressive 6.2%. This could translate into tens of thousands of lives saved every year if transplants were banned nationwide. In the meantime, don't wait for the nationwide ban. I urge you to not patronize restaurants or purchase food from companies that use trans fats. They do not use trans fats for your benefit, but for theirs. Eat healthy, live long. Empathy from infected sick people could go a long way to halting an epidemic of contagious disease. Researchers from the Georgia Institute of Technology used a networked variation of game theory to study how individual behaviors during an outbreak, outbreak of a contagious disease affects how rapidly the disease spreads. They looked specifically at the behavior of infected people, comparing this with the behavior of non-infected but infection-susceptible people. They found infectious disease spread could only be halted if infected people took greater precautions to avoid infecting others. The study was funded by the U.S. Army and was published by Scientific Reports. Isn't this fascinating? You know, folks, the media loves to sensationalize every potential epidemic, instilling fear into the public, hoping to create an epidemic sparing action by the people. However, this study found those media-driven actions are totally ineffective. See, it's like this. In the past, we have focused our infectious disease-halting efforts on urging non-infected people to take immunizations, frequently wash their hands, and to avoid contact and exposure to infected people, such as not drinking after others and, or using their hand towels. You know the drill. They go on and on, and you've heard them ad nauseum. Now, we hear it with every new flu season, with every new germ, such as the bird flu, Ebola, and the Zika virus, and more. Now, this study wanted to know if there is a better way to halt the spread of infectious disease than all the hyperbole, and guess what? It matters more what the person with the infectious flu does than the person who is trying to avoid the infection. Their conclusion? If you have the flu, show some empathy by covering your mouth and nose when you sneeze or cough, wash your hands frequently and use disposable towels and eating utensils, and better still, just stay home when you're sick. If we all did just that, we wouldn't have these epidemics and everyone would be better off. So show some compassion and stay home the next time you get sick. You could actually stop an epidemic. Wouldn't that be something? Today on Your Health, we'd like to discuss celiac disease or gluten sensitivity. Are you reacting to wheat? Well, stay tuned to learn more. We'll be right back. Every day, about 200 million Americans do not get enough of a key essential mineral. That mineral is magnesium. The typical American diet does not supply enough. And magnesium is so important. It protects bones and helps more than 300 different enzymes in the human body perform efficiently. That's why BioNovations offers chelated magnesium capsules for oral use and topical magnesium gel to be applied to the skin. That's two forms of magnesium to meet your daily needs. Scientific evidence points to chelation as the best method of vitamin and mineral formulation. Order online at BioInnovations.net or call 888-442-2128 and let us assist you in making the right choices for better health. Because chances are you are one of the 200 million Americans who need more magnesium every day. Again, that number is 888-442-2128. Call today. Ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings. I'm Dr. Richard Becker, and this is Your Health at a Glance. Are you sleepy during the day? Many Americans are in a sleep crisis. They aren't getting a good night's sleep, so they suffer from daytime sleepiness. The reason may surprise you, you may be deficient in vitamin D. According to recent research, vitamin D deficiency leads to poor sleep quality. If you aren't sleeping well at night, you are sleepy during the day. Vitamin D and the hormone melatonin are critical to our sleep cycles. Both are tied to sunlight. This is one of the many reasons why working night shift hours can be so hard on the body. So, if you're finding yourself nodding off during the day, before you turn to another cup of coffee, try some of the sunshine vitamin and see how vitamin D can help you get a good night's sleep. For your health at a glance, I'm Dr. Richard Becker. 
Can you lower your risk of disease? The answer is yes. One way is by including fruit in your diet. Fruit contains valuable nutrients that can reduce the risk of heart disease, stroke, and even some cancers. We've searched the world and found four fruits we believe are among the best. Noni from Polynesia, acai from the Amazon, and two new ones, goji and mangosteen. These four juices each have amazing properties that make them great additions to your nutritional plan. If you're a diabetic or have chronic pain, these juices will help you feel better and have more energy. Plus, they help with digestion. Now you can experience the health-promoting benefits of all four in one convenient package we call the Fruits of the World 4-Pack. And remember, it's 50% off by the case. Order online at bioinnovations.net or call 888-442-2128 and let us assist you in making the right choices for better health. Ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings. That number is 888-442-2128. We're back, everyone. It is great to be with you today. I hope everything is wonderful in your corner of the world. Well, today's show is going to be quite informative. We're going to be talking all about gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. This is quite interesting, and you know it is on the rise. But the good news is I find that most restaurants now do offer gluten-free options. You just have to ask. And there's a lot more groceries readily available, but as you're going to see, not all of them are such healthy options. So Richard, there's a lot to talk about today. There is, and, and celiac disease is a fascinating topic because it's, a, it's kind of a poster child for nutritional therapies. Having a reaction to a food that causes a health decline uh, is something that not all doctors have believed in over the years. But the celiac disease and how it works is proof that food can cause disease. Now what is this stuff, celiac disease? What, what is celia? Uh, celiac, celia means, it's a Greek word meaning intestines. So it's a, the disease of the intestine in simple terms. It's a hereditary immune based intolerance of a protein called gluten found in the cereal grains, wheat, barley, and rye. Not so much oats, in fact, there's none in oats, but we'll talk about that in the future here. Celia, now there's some confusion on the names too. It goes by a lot of names. If you go to the medical journals, doctors refer to celiac disease when children have gluten intolerance. And celiac sprue when an adult has gluten intolerance. But it also goes by non-tropical sprue, adult celiac disease, and gluten sensitive enteropathy. Now that's a lot of big words and I don't want anybody to be confused. We're going to refer it on this program as either celiac disease or gluten intolerance, no matter who has the condition. So we gotta be on the same page. Now, this is a hereditary based. So if one member of the family has gluten sensitivity, you have a tenfold increase, a thousand percent more likely that you would have celiac disease as well. It can be mild, so mild that it would take a lot of spaghetti noodles for you to have a reaction, but I just feel tired after I eat that. It can be really mild, or it can be so severe that one bite of a gluten-containing foods can put you into the hospital. It can be that bad. Fortunately, it's not usually that bad, but it can be. It is also considered an autoimmune disease because it is our immune system's reaction to the gluten that makes us sick. The onset of this condition can be anywhere from one year of age to 80 years of age. And this is very important to understand that because you may have eaten wheat bread all your life and had no trouble digesting it and then out of the blue, you become intolerant of wheat and have a real health problem and it's hard to understand what's causing it because you've had bread and sandwiches and, and pastries and whatnot all your life without a problem. And now all of a sudden you do. This has been known to happen. To complicate the scenario even a, a little more, there's more to gluten intolerance than just celiac disease. Now let me explain. Studies show that America has gained weight. We're all familiar with that. Go to the shopping mall, you see evidence of that. However, the studies also show that we're eating about 75 calories less than we did 30 or 40 years ago, yet we are still gaining weight. Why could that be? During this time of weight gain, 
the gluten content of wheat has increased from, on average, 3 to 5 percent. That's a small percent of the wheat as being gluten. All the way up to 50 percent. Half of the wheat flour is now gluten. The wheat plant is all, now all of that is due to hybridization. I want to be real clear on this so everybody understand. The increase of gluten content is due to hybridization, not genetically modifying the plant. This is the safe way to modify plants, the hybridization. However, there's another kink to the story. Also, these plants have become genetically modified to tolerate glyphosate. Now, what is glyphosate? That is what we call Roundup. Roundup Ready Wheat. This is an herbicide that kills anything green. And what they've done with the wheat plant is insert a gene sequence from, I don't know where it came from. It could have been a mouse. It could have been a tomato. I don't know where it came from, but we could find that out. And it makes the wheat plant tolerant to this herbicide. So you can spray the wheat plant. All the weeds are killed, but not the wheat plant. Now, when glyphosate was first introduced into the uh, public uh, consumption, we were told that it left the food plant within a week. Within a week, it was gone. By the time it's been harvested and put in the, uh, the, uh, the grain bins and processed into your loaf of bread, there's no more glyphosate in that at all. Well, subsequent studies have shown it can be in the foods up to 200 days later. So what we have is a hybridized plant with a lot of, uh, of, of, of gluten genetically modified to accept Roundup or glyphosate. And Roundup glyphosate has been, I don't want to say proven, but there's enough research that suggests exposure to glyphosate leads to allergies, immune reactions to foods. So this is a combination of a highly complex antigenic rich food stuff, gluten, plus a, a chemical pollutant that increases our propensity to react to foods. And we have created multiple reactions to wheat now. So what do we have? We have celiac disease, which is an IgA antibody associated condition, we, but we also have allergy. This is the classic peanut allergy. This is an immunoglobulin E. IgE associate. We can have this to wheat. Kids have this too and so can adults. But we can also have IgG antibody associated reactions to gluten. We can have a combination of those. We can have irritable bowel syndrome associated with wheat. And we can also have just a plain weight gain from all the gluten. Now let me explain that. Gluten is a sticky substance. It's a protein. It's gooey. It binds the loaf of bread together. You know, there's no egg in traditional bread, and yet it binds together. That is the gluten. So modern food processing has increased the gluten content to bind things together, bind the loaf of bread together using cheaper ingredients. Also, it has a sweet, chewy texture that people love. And get this, they've been able to prove that this complex protein component called gluten, when we metabolize it, it's broken into peptide chains, which are short pieces of protein that gain access to our bloodstream and act as endorphins. And you know our endorphins are our natural pain relievers that our body makes. So here's the scenario. When we eat modern wheat, it tells our brain that we're happy, satisfied, and full, and life is good because of a chemical reaction in our brain. It furthers overeating, and we, here's the sense. It's not a meal without a piece of bread. How often have you heard that? I just don't feel full unless I have some bread, some starch. People think it's just the starch, but it's also the gluten. So we have all these driving forces, and this is the basic reason why we have so much more reactions to wheat today. Now, not all of this is strictly proven, but the evidence is mounting. What we're talking about today is gluten sensitivity. But you can have all of these other forms of gluten intolerance as well. Let's go off to our break, and let's talk more about celiac disease specifically. That's our topic today when we return.
Are you one of the 62 million Americans suffering from gastrointestinal problems? Do you struggle with other chronic conditions? That's why we offer Dr. Becker's Bionutrient Probiotics. After years of research, we developed a revolutionary probiotic formula with gastro defense technology. This system protects the good bacteria from stomach acid so the probiotics reach the intestines where they go to work. Additionally, we use live count technology to prolong the shelf life of the probiotics, so there's no need for refrigeration. Dr. Becker's Bionutrient Probiotics is a powerful combination and one of the most effective formulas available today. And we offer a children's chewable formula too, both at prices you can afford. Order online at bioinnovations.net or call 888-442-2128 and let us assist you in making the right choices for better health. Ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings. That number is 888-442-2128. I'm Cindy Becker, and this is Your Health at a Glance. Are you following a low-fat diet? While it's true that too much fat makes us overweight, certain types of fat are actually good for us. Add to your diet omega-3 fats such as fish and flaxseed oil, and omega-9 oleic acid found in olive oil. And reduce in your diet omega-6 found in corn, safflower, and peanut oil, and saturated fats found in meats and whole milk dairy products. Studies show those fats can promote inflammation and chronic disease. The Mediterranean diet can help you make good choices, such as fruits, vegetables, whole grains, lean meats, fish, olives, and olive oil. So remember, increase omega-3 and omega-9 fats. Reduce omega-6 and saturated fat. For your health at a glance, I'm Cindy Becker. For centuries, the herb astragalus has been a staple of traditional Chinese medicine. It's used to create a strong shield, protecting the immune system. Astragalus is also used to support healthy heart and lung function. There's even more. Astragalus helps to calm total body inflammation, a common cause of pain and chronic illness. All of that without the use of medication. That's right. Support your health the way nature intended with astragalus root. Bioinnovations brings you Dr. Becker's Bionutrients Astragalus Root Extract. Bioinnovations is the affordable source that you can trust for all your vitamin and supplement needs. Give us a call at 888-442-2128 or order online at bioinnovations.net and see what Astragalus can do for your health. That number once again is 888-442-2128. Ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings. Call today. We're back, everyone, learning all about gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. Well, Richard, to get into it, let's talk about gluten. Yes. What exactly is gluten? Well, it's a complex protein. It has some 70 different proteins in it, and these are proteins capable of initiating an immune physiologic response. This uh, gluten is found in wheat, barley, rye, and oats that have been processed on machinery or farm equipment that uh, harvested wheat barley or rye. And here's the point. If your combine just harvested a thousand acres of wheat, you can't get all of that gluten out of that machine. There's going to be some of it in there. So when they go into the field with the oats, it's going to be contaminated oats. So you have to be careful with oats. You have to be sure it's certified gluten-free. That's an important point if you're celiac. Wheat variants. All the wheat variants have this gluten, whether it's simo, simolina, simolina, I want to say that properly, spelt, kamut, icorn, triticale, durum, farrow wheats, all of these contain gluten. Gliadin is the protein in gluten that is most likely to be causing the celiac reaction. This is difficult to digest, this gluten, and often it's incomplete digestion and protein particles gain access into the bloodstream and proteins are highly antigenic, meaning it stimulates an immune response. You're coming to understand how celiac disease comes about. Gluten is found in a wide variety of everyday things. And if you have celiac, you need to know where you can be exposed to gluten because they don't always call it gluten. How about stamp glue? Did you know that that may have stamp glue? You know, like a stamp, put it on a letter. Email is gluten-free, <laughs> but stamps may have gluten in it. 
Who knew? Adhesives, a wide variety. Remember, it's a binding, sticky agent. Lipsticks may have it. Lotions, soy sauce, and some medications. If some people are so sensitive to gluten, even a wisp of gluten against the skin, they react to it. That can happen. If you have celiac, learn these sources of hidden gluten. Go online, learn these things. Some gluten intolerant patients can eat heritage wheats, the ancient forms of the wheat before all the hybridization and GMO modification. Some can, but I'm not gonna tell you, you can. That is something you have to be very careful with, but there are cases of people who can eat the ancient strains of wheat, but not the modern ones. Just keep that in mind. What causes celiac disease? Well, basically it is a genetic programming to react to these proteins. However, if you have the genes for celiac, only 1% of this group will go on to develop celiac. So clearly there are a variety of precipitating factors. A a little time with the research will help you to see that epigenetics plays a role in celiac. What is epigenetics? It's the, it's the mechanisms that control gene expression. If you turn on that gene, you're going to have celiac. Intestinal bacteria play a role in the expression of celiac. Reovirus, which is an intestinal virus that children get. If the child is genetically susceptible and they have the real virus and they have a vitamin deficiency or mother had a vitamin D deficiency, they may go on to develop celiac disease. Multifactorial, that's the point. Vitamin deficiencies of a variety of type. Various health challenges, say the child has allergies and they have food allergies of the other type and their intestinal lining is irritated they have increased exposure to the gluten. See, you're catching on to these things. The vitamin D status of mothers, the place of birth of the child, this has been implicated in celiac disease. Babies susceptible to celiac disease with the real virus when gluten is, if there's a perfect storm of events is what we're talking about. If these things come together, then the 1% of the 100 who have the gene for celiac, they go on to develop celiac disease. Isn't that something? 50 years ago, one out of 500 people worldwide had celiac. Today, that number is from 1 to 40 to 1 to 130, depending on the genetic makeup of the people you're studying. 1 in 500 to 1 in 40 in some areas. Yes, it's increasing. Why? Well, I think we answered that. Time will tell with increased research, but the point that we need to understand is you may develop celiac disease late in life, even though you've been able to digest wheat and, and gluten all your, all your 50, 60 years. It has been known to happen. It's increasing. It is basically immune reaction to gluten caused, which causes intestinal damage that affects nutrient absorption. These reactive immune complexes circulate. Gluten is the antigen. Antibodies, IgA type, makes an immune complex that circulates through the bloodstream and it can attach to cells anywhere in the body. Most often it's in the intestinal tract, but it can be in the brain. When that immune complex attaches to the cell, your immune system sets out to destroy the cell. I'm imagining this is that cell. So if it's in your brain, you can get white spots on your brain that look just like MS. If it's on your liver, it can lead to scarring and cirrhosis, just like an alcoholic cirrhosis. So it can go, it can go to your joints, it can go make you depressed and anxious, all sorts of things. Signs and symptoms of celiac may mimic other serious diseases. The white spots on the brain of MS, ulcerative colitis, Crohn's disease, fistulas and abscesses may form. This is, is potentially an intense immune reaction that causes great damage in distant joints and organs. Depression, insomnia, arthritis, organ inflammation, etc. Symptoms may appear in childhood, go away, reemerge 30, 40 years later. That's been known to happen. Here's the sad part. The first symptom to diagnosis on average is 13 years. This means extended periods of suffering. No one knows the diagnosis, but the patient knows something's wrong and on they suffer, on they suffer. This is the main reason for this discussion today. I don't like seeing people suffer. If this educational experience for you helps to save a life, I'm all for it. Getting the word out helps people tremendously. Now, what are the symptoms and complications of celiac? In an adult, it is highly variable. 
However, the classic symptoms in an adult are diarrhea, cramping, gas, intestinal disturbances, pain, nutrient deficiencies, immune deficiencies, and weight loss. But it can be a wide variety of things. Ulcers, anemia, malabsorption of nutrients leading to immune deficiencies because you can't fight infections. Osteoporosis, you're not absorbing minerals to maintain your bones. Cardiovascular disease from the inflammation. Infertility in women. Miscarriages, congenital malformations due to the low folate levels. Irritable bowel syndrome, lactose intolerance, yeast syndromes. There is profound dysbiosis in the celiac disease patient who continues to eat gluten. Other food intolerances, multiple conditions, it snowballs, hair loss, weight loss may be severe, white spots on the brain, and mimicking of other diseases. When we return, let's talk about the symptoms in a child with celiac disease. They are slightly different, very similar, but different, and we need to know those as well. We'll be right back. CoQ10 and L-carnitine are among the most important nutrients our bodies use for energy production. Deficiency in these key nutrients can cause serious complications to your health. In fact, statin drugs that are used to lower cholesterol may deplete your CoQ10 levels. Bioinnovations brings you Dr. Becker's Bionutrients CoQ10 with L-carnitine. Now providing support for cardiovascular health is easier than ever before. CoQ10 and L-carnitine support a healthy heart now. Naturally, as nature intended, and our formulation provides 300% greater absorption of CoQ10 than similar products using a technology so effective it's patented. Bio Innovations is the affordable source that you can trust for all your vitamin and supplement needs. Give us a call at 888-442-2128. That's 888-442-2128. Or order online at bioinnovations.net. I'm Dr. Richard Becker for your health at a glance. Are you tired all the time? Persistent fatigue along with shortness of breath, headaches, and unusual food cravings may all be a sign of anemia. Anyone may develop anemia, but toddlers, women in their reproductive years, and the elderly are most likely to become anemic. If you are diagnosed with anemia, it's important to understand why. Even mild anemia, untreated, can lead to serious illness. Your doctor will diagnose the type of anemia you have, how you develop the condition, and how to treat it. There are many forms. But not all types of anemia are treated with iron. In fact, taking extra iron when it is not needed may add to your health problems. Once you finish treatment, you must follow up with your physician. Anemia can recur. For your health at a glance, I'm Dr. Richard Becker. Vitamin D deficiency is at epidemic levels in the United States. Chances are you aren't getting enough of this essential nutrient. Vitamin D is one of the most important molecules in the human body. It's required for the proper function of nearly 4,000 genes and 1,000 metabolic chemical reactions. Bioinnovations brings you Dr. Becker's Bionutrients Vitamin D3. Now supplementing with vitamin D is safe and affordable. Studies show that vitamin D deficiency can lead to poor immune function, depression, cardiovascular disease, bone disease, diabetes, cancer, and much more. Starting supplementing vitamin D today for better health tomorrow. Bioinnovations is the affordable source that you can trust for all your vitamin and supplement needs. So give us a call at 888-442-2128. That's 888-442-2128. Or order online at bioinnovations.net. We're back, everyone, talking about gluten sensitivity and celiac disease. We talked about the symptoms that an adult would suffer. Now let's turn the tables a little bit and let's talk about the children. They, so, Richard, maybe the children present with a few different symptoms. They do. You, you know, adults have a higher pain threshold and, and, and they have more responsibilities, so they put up with things. And, and so celiac can progress into complications in other organs. I really want to make the point that it can get so bad that the, the adult has difficulty walking, just like an MS patient, multiple sclerosis patient may have. And so that's always on the list. It's always on the differential. The foods you're eating may be mimicking neurodegenerative diseases. 
boy, wouldn't you hate to see a person uh, years of suffering when all it would take is no more bread? <laughs> wouldn't that be something? And this has happened. It happens every day, every single day. Now, with children, we focus on failure to thrive. You know, if your doctor is a good doctor, your pediatrician, they always do the growth chart on the little ones. If the child's not gaining weight, the head circumference, you know, they're not, their weight is not appropriate for their height, the growth chart. Remember when we did this in practice? I was emphatic. Every child on a growth chart. This is how you catch it because the child can't express to you. You know, those sandwiches you're giving me are killing my guts. They don't, they're not able to do that so well. So we look for signs of failure to thrive. Diarrhea may be present. Irritable bowel-like uh, symptoms, uh, uh, gurgling in the intestines, uh, multiple cavities with dental enamel malformations. The reaction can occur in the mouth and it leads to cavities in the little ones. Allergic dermatitis because the, the gut is inflamed and they develop allergies to other foods and so they get eczema. They get eczema. The real problem is celiac disease. Isn't that something? Rickets, malabsorption, they can't form the bones, no vitamin D, not enough to make proper bones. And behavior problems, this is very important in the, child, in the children. They're irritable, they're emotionally withdrawn, and they underachieve, this is the tendency. So we have to look for signs more in children than in the adults. The adults will tell you, I'm not doing well, okay? Now, what are some other diseases associated with celiac disease? We had mentioned these immune complexes, how they can travel and, and they cause damage in other areas and it depletes the system leading to complications. Well, let's just go a few of those just so you know how important it is to adhere to your gluten-free diet. Cancer. Celiac patients are highly susceptible to cancer. Lymphomas, particularly intestinal cancers. Intestinal ulcerations, mouth sores. Those with, if we took uh, 100 people with ongoing chronic mouth sores, there's always a sore spot in the mouth. At least 25% of those are due to celiac disease. 25% of the patients with chronic mouth sores actually have celiac disease, and those mouth sores are never gonna clear up no matter what toothpaste you use until you get off the gluten. Skin rashes. There is a classic skin rash that is a sign of celiac. Dermatitis herpetiformis. It is the sin qua non, as we say in medicine. It is absolutely celiac till proven otherwise. Sin qua non. Dermatitis herpetiformis. It's a severe, itchy, blistering skin condition. It looks like herpes or shingles, but it's not. It has other characteristics, but it looks like it. Typically on the knees, buttocks, and neck. If you have that, you have celiac disease. It will not go away until you eliminate gluten. Other autoimmune diseases, such as rheumatoid, sojourns, dry mouth, diabetes. These are all coexisting comorbidities, doctor call, doctors call them, with celiac disease thyroid disease, systemic lupus, these are all your autoimmune diseases, as is celiac disease. These immune complexes can trigger other diseases, and really the, the core reason is celiac. It's not rheumatoid, it's celiac. But the rheumatoid mysteriously clears when we eliminate the gluten. Isn't that fascinating? And very powerful, help many. This is why I so often recommend to callers, New onset uh, rheumatoid, no family history, no other. Well, maybe you're beginning to re react to uh, wheat and gluten products. Go up without it. It may make a tremendous difference. That's the reason behind that line of thinking. Osteoporosis, bone pain, kyphosis, dementia increases, mental illness increases, autism, the ataxia, the difficult gait, even schizophrenia can be associated with celiac disease. Remarkable, isn't it? Fatty liver disease, 3% of all cirrhosis is actually due to celiac. Uh, fatty liver infiltration, NASH, cirrhosis, immune complexes attack other organs, creating a very difficult to diagnose scenario unless you think of celiac. And here's the, another important point. For some people who have the more, the more severe forms of celiac, it can take a whole year of gluten avoidance before you can say, boy, I feel a lot better. And that can be a real problem. Uh, you know, most people would say, I'm off the gluten, it's been 60 days, I don't feel much better. It must not be gluten sensitivity. This is one of the reasons why it's so important to do proper testing. We'll get to that in a minute. Unusual facts about celiac disease. Occurrences doubled every 15 years since 1974. 
We have four times the numbers of the 1950s, four times. And we explained that process, at least one possible answer, reason for that. The fastest growing book, uh, groups are in the elderly and in children. Elder, people who've digested uh, gluten all their lives are the fastest growing group. Millions have the gene, however, aberrations in the gut, vitamin deficiencies infected with the right virus triggers the process. Celiac patients are 300% more likely to have schizophrenia. They're 300% more likely to develop lymphoma and 4,000% more likely to develop intestinal lymphomas. You're so depleted, so susceptible to the viruses, you can get cancer from these viruses. Unmanaged celiac disease or only partially managed celiac disease increases your risk of death 150, 200%. It's even more than what I have listed here. 3% of all cases of cirrhosis are due to gluten intolerance. Celiac disease patients are four times more likely to develop tuberculosis. They are twice as likely to have elevated homocysteine levels that lead to cardiovascular disease, 250% more likely to have diseases of the peripheral nerves. And you thought it was diabetes. No, it's gluten sensitivity. 97% of those with gluten intolerance do not know they have it. They just know something's wrong. And the foods that contain gluten are unbelievable. We'll talk about that when we return. You'd never know what was in there if you didn't know the list. We'll be right back. that nature holds the answer to your health needs? Are you looking for a supplement that's simple and pure, yet really works? If you're looking for nature's answer to better health, look to Aloha Noni Juice. It's pure and fresh, just like nature intended. Aloha Noni Juice is brought to you direct from the islands of Polynesia. Aloha Noni Juice is 100% pure with no added sugar or sweet fruit fillers. It's the perfect addition to your low sugar diet. Aloha Noni Juice drinkers will tell you their vitality, energy, and sense of well-being have improved, along with relief from many painful conditions. Made by nature, proven by science. Aloha Noni Juice contains only nature's best. And now you can enjoy the benefits of our new 100% certified organic Noni Juice. Order online at bioinnovations.net or call 888-442-2128 and let us assist you in making the right choices for better health. Ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings. our hope for you today. I'm Cindy Becker. Do you feel that you'll never really be joyful and happy in your life? The Reverend Billy Graham wrote about these two emotions, joy and happiness. Dr. Graham says, joy is not the same as happiness, although they may overlap. Happiness depends on circumstances. Joy depends on God. In Psalm 30, David, whose life seemed an endless battle, experienced joy despite his problems as king of Israel. David wrote, you turned my wailing into dancing. You removed my sackcloth and clothed me with joy, that my heart may sing to you and not be silent. If you are struggling to find joy in your life, pray to God, count your blessings. Joy depends on God. I'm Cindy Becker. This is our hope for you today. Have you heard about the health promoting power of medicinal mushrooms? These remarkable mushrooms include maitake, shiitake, reishi, and ABM. The medicinal mushrooms contain beta-glucans, compounds that promote healthy immune function while helping to coordinate multiple body systems. Innovations brings you Dr. Becker's Bionutrients Mushroom Complex with Mayataki, Shiitake, Rishi, and ABM in one convenient product. Our mushroom complex features the safest and most powerful medicinal mushrooms available, providing natural support for a variety of health conditions. Bio Innovations is the affordable source that you can trust for all your vitamin and supplement needs. So give us a call at 888-442-2128. That's 888-442-2128. Or order online at bioinnovations.net. Ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings.
We're back, everyone, learning about celiac disease and gluten sensitivity. This is so interesting, and as you know, diet is so important. So, Richard, what foods would you find gluten typically in? Well, you know, the cereal grains, wheat, barley, rye, mm -hmm. and non-certified uh, oats. Okay. Th that's a for sure. But it's often disguised. You may find gluten in soups, gravies. You know, homemade gravy, they use a little flour to thicken the agent. And they do that with commercial gravies as well. Sauces as a thickening agent. The gluten has that sticky uh, binding effect that uh, can help uh, foods just tastes luxurious and good, so it's used a lot, and it's cheap to use. Luncheon meats as a binder to hold the meat together, canned meats, salad dressings as a thickening agent, instant coffee. I don't know why that is, but that's one that we've been advised, be careful with instant coffees. Hard candies, even hard candies. Candy bars, yogurt, that's the one that's kind of surprising. Yogurt can have it probably as a thickening agent, so you really do have to read labels to be careful. Uh, ketchup and mustard, there can also be hidden, now not all ketchups and not all mustards, so you have to read your labels. Hidden sources of gluten, unidentified or modified food starch. If it says that, it may have gluten in it. In the United States, unmodified food starch is usually corn-based, which is gluten-free. In Canada, it's wheat-based, but you have to find out. See, that's the importance of it. Hydrolyzed vegetable or plant protein. Well, that's the very definition of gluten. It's a plant protein. Binders, stabilizers, emulsifiers, that's all it may say. And it could be a gluten product. Fillers, excipients, extenders, and of course malt, which is fermented barley. So any of these sources may contain gluten and we have to be aware. Now in today's world we have so much more information available to us on what foods may have gluten, support groups, uh, information data banks and all it and it's so important and we have so many more foods. 20 years ago uh, maybe there were 200 gluten-free products available nationwide. Now that figure is over 3,000. So the celiac patient today, yes, they can live gluten-free, they can live with celiac disease, and uh, it's getting easier and easier. But the patient has to do their part. They have to be very aware because some people are very, very sensitive. Now, how do you know that you have celiac for sure? How do we diagnose it? What does the doctor do? Well, the gold standard to diagnose celiac disease is an esophageal gastro duodenoscopy. That's the tube down the throat. They go all the way down to the first part of the uh, small intestine, past the duodenum a little bit, and do a biopsy. Take a little pinch of intestinal lining, take it out, then the pathologist looks at it under a microscope, and with celiac disease, the villi, the little project, finger projections in the intestinal tract are blunted down due to traumas induced by the immune system. It has a very characteristic look, and the doctor can make a diagnosis. However, there are a few other conditions that can look the same way. So they always do blood tests now to confirm the diagnosis of celiac disease. And oftentimes, the patient will want to just do the blood test and a lot of doctors will do that and I don't have a problem with that but we need a clear-cut indication if you have celiac disease now keep in mind as you're going through this the antibody tests that we use to make a blood test diagnosis of celiac disease are all IgA antibodies these are secretory antibodies our intestinal tract secretes them into the lumen to do the job of the immune system in the intestinal tract if you have long-standing celiac disease your immune system can be so depleted that your IgA levels are low and the blood test is falsely negative does that make sense it's very important so we have to look at the total picture and sometimes we have to approach this in a different way the blood tests I want to just name them so you have a familiarity Anti-transglutaminase test. Anti-transglutaminase, if that is positive, then we do an anti-endomycelial antibodies to confirm celiac disease. Now, go ahead. Well, I was just thinking, just for thinking's sake, could a person not just avoid gluten and yeah. avoid, just go on a wheat-free, gluten-free diet and then say, okay, I'm done. Yes, you're free to do that. However, that can lead to a problem. 
Okay. Knowing that it can take a year for you to feel significantly better, and most people feel better within a month. I want to be clear about that. But it can take a year. If you're six months into this and you don't realize it can take so long, you go, well, it's not the gluten. I've been off it for six months and I still don't feel like I should. Maybe I'm a little better. I'm going to go back on. Or I, I'm going to go to the doctor. It's been six months since no gluten. The antibodies are gone now. You don't have any antibodies to gluten because you haven't been eating gluten. The doctor can't test. Okay. Now, an enterprising young scientist developed a new test. It is called the cytokine release test. And this test, you only have to take gluten. You only have to eat the, the wheat for a couple, three days, and that test will be positive. The older tests, which are still good tests, it can take two, three weeks of gluten exposure before the test is positive. And when people have avoided gluten for months and then they reintroduce it, the reaction is almost always worse. So that's the problem with just avoiding. But I understand living in the real world. Money is tight. We can't always find a doctor who will do what we ask them to do. And some people just have to avoid the gluten. But understand there can be a problem with that. So also when our diagnosis, keep in mind that there can be other conditions as we talked early on. You can have regular allergy to wheat. You can have IgG antibody associated immune reactions. You can have irritable bowel syndrome. You can just have the gluten uh, effect that everybody has of the weight gain and the bloating and overeating that comes occurs with everybody with wheat, the modern versions of wheat. So it does get a little complicated, but the treatment is really simple. And we're going to talk about that when we return. Have you heard of Cordyceps sinensis, the medicinal mushroom that supports metabolic processes for stimulant-free energy? This remarkable mushroom also supports the immune and respiratory systems, as well as the heart and lungs. Bioinnovations brings you Dr. Becker's Bionutrients, Cordyceps sinensis. Medicinal mushrooms contain beta-glucans, compounds that promote healthy immune function while helping to coordinate multiple body systems. And Cordyceps sinensis is among the safest and most powerful medicinal mushrooms available today, making it your choice for stimulant-free natural energy. Innovations is the affordable source that you can trust for all your vitamin and supplement needs. Give us a call at 888-442-2128. That's 888-442-2128. Or order online at bioinnovations.net. Be sure to ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings. I'm Cindy Becker for Your Health at a Glance. How often do you go into the grocery store to buy just a bag of chips or candy bar? I suspect not very often. Then how is it that these foods make it into our grocery bags and pantries? Do you make impulse choices and buy junk food? To control that impulse, plan your next trip to the store. Write down at least three days of menus and build a grocery list with the ingredients needed to prepare the meals. Eat a healthy snack before going to the store. If you are hungry, you're less likely to stick to the grocery list. Shop the perimeter of the store, starting with fruits and vegetables. Have you ever noticed the most healthy foods are in the outer aisles? And avoid items displayed at the checkout counter, trying to entice you to make a last minute purchase. Follow these tips and make a plan so your next trip gives you control and you come home with bags full of healthy food. For your health at a glance, I'm Cindy Becker. Is your life out of balance? It may be. The average American consumes far too many omega-6s and not enough omega-3s. This creates an imbalance. So what can we do to get back in balance? We can eat a healthy diet. And most of us need to supplement with omega-3 rich fish oil. Fish oil contains omega-3s with DHA and EPA, fatty acids that promote good brain and heart health. So reduce omega-6 in your nutritional plan and boost omega-3 to get back in balance. To help you do that, BioInnovations offers two products, the Fish Oil Complex and Omega-369, both formulated for your health and well-being. So how do you choose? For highest levels of DHA and EPA, choose the Fish Oil Complex. For a balanced formula, choose the 369. Go online at bioinnovations.net or call 888-442-2128. Ask about the AutoShip program for additional savings. 
Your Health is brought to you by BioInnovations, trusted products for your health and well-being. We're back, everyone. So, Richard, I know time is short, but let's talk a little bit about how celiac disease is treated and what nutritional plan could we put together? What supplements could we take to help us deal with this condition? That's a very good question. The treatment plan is relatively simple. Our diet must be absolutely gluten-free. And the most common reason for failure to progress in the, uh, in the course of the gluten treatment, gluten sensitivity treatment, is failure to adhere to the diet. It's what you do on a daily basis. We, there's, a, there's a big psychological component to this, accepting the fact that there's no more gluten. But once you start feeling better, it self-sustains. Now, there are experimental immunotherapies in work trying to get people so they can go back on gluten. There's even a vaccine available for the real virus, the next vax, but that's for the next generation. If you already have celiac, that, that's not going to help you. So, and I urge you to be cautious with all those substances that, that promise you to be able to eat gluten again. I, don't, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. Fundamentally, we have to correct the intestinal dysbiosis. You have to understand your immune system was at war with your diet, and that transfers into your tissues, and we have to correct the terrain. So all of the measures we talk about to treat yeast, intestinal dysbiosis, abnormal intestinal flora, applies to the recovering celiac patient. So things such as olive leaf extract, oil of oregano, mangosteen, curcumin, all these wonderful agents we use to suppress the yeast and the abnormal bacteria that absolutely proliferate with uncontrolled celiac disease applies to you. Slowly introducing more fiber, probiotics to the max, re-establish the bowel flora, uh, replace lost nutrients, particularly the fat-soluble vitamins, A, D, E. These are very important. These are the classic malabsorptant nutrients that we lose when we have chronic diarrhea and intestinal inflammation. We don't absorb. But all the vitamins are important, especially their minerals. Remember, osteoporosis is common. But we can rebuild those bones. We can. That's the new and hopeful information. But we have to have the nutrients to do that. Uh, digestive enzymes. They can be quite helpful because these immune complexes can attack the liver and the pancreas and we create a scenario where we're not digesting properly and it's hard to, to catch hold and regain your health because we're not digesting. So digestive enzymes can really make a big difference in the recovering celiac patient. Are we getting this? Treat the intestinal dysbiosis, reestablish bowel flora, replace the nutrients, assist digestion, and the gluten-free diet. Now, how do you get one of those? What I would recommend is to get a copy of Foundations for Healing and make the healing diet gluten-free, the transitional diet gluten-free, and the diet for the rest of your life gluten-free. This is basically the Mediterranean style of eating in a more organic way with out the pesticides and chemicals and all the exposures and it's corrective. We can reestablish the bowel flora and you can regain health and vitality. It happens every single day but the first step folks, what is the first step? Suspecting I'm reacting to a food. Could it possibly be what I'm eating is eating me? And if it's celiac, that's exactly what's happening. It's a lifelong commitment. If that changes, stay tuned. I will let you know. If they figure out a way to cure it, I hope they do, but not yet. Thank you for your kind attention. We'll see you right here tomorrow on Your Health. Bye-bye, everyone. Thanks, everyone. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Did you know not all bacteria is bad? Probiotics are healthy, beneficial bacteria which provide life-giving support for your intestines. Add foods like fermented cabbage, coconut, or miso that supports the good bacterial balance in your gut. Real foods like this boost your nutrient assimilation. Plus, you'll feel great. It's not crazy, just healthy. Next time on The Three, we welcome the author of Choosing the Extraordinary Life, Dr. Robert Jeffress, as we discuss how you can turn your ordinary life into an extraordinary one. One of the ways